AJH Synth, Alan, how are you? Hello, uh, welcome to Superbooth uh, 2016. Um, we have um, two new products uh, to launch here. Um, as uh, we're probably uh, best known for our, um, our mini mod system, which was the, um, the very early um, RA Moog. Uh, Model D synthesizer. Yes, I saw um, that at Kimru Beach, didn't we? we, we, uh, we absolutely, yes, and it's uh, it's been out for um, it's been out for about 18 months now, and uh, it's been very very well received. It's um, it's uh, some very popular modules, and we're getting we're getting all kinds of really nice um, comments and, and feedback uh, coming in, coming back on it. Uh, we we launched the uh, the black panels um, at, uh, at Music Mesa um, last year. Uh, which the, the original the original modules were the uh, were the were the silver. Um, the the one thing that we've changed on the silver modules is the uh, the logo. We now have a black synth silk screened um, AJ synth logo on the uh, on the silver modules uh, rather than the the earlier blue um, logos that we uh, that we had. Um, so new new for the uh, for Super Booth is um, we have two modules. The first one is the um, our Sonic XV filter and this filter is uh, based on the the new Sonics Sonic 5 synthesizer which was um, uh, made by a company called New Sonics which was uh, was started by Gene Zumcheck who um, worked with uh, with Bob Moog on the original Moog modulars and um, legend has it that uh, that him and uh, Bill Hemsworth were um, with the with the originators of the idea of the of the mini Moog, and um, Bob Bob Moog wasn't convinced at the time, but um, Zumcheck and, um, and and Bob Moog uh, fell out, and uh, so Gene Zumcheck went off and formed his own company, which was New Sonics, and he made the um, the New Sonics Sonic Five synthesizer. Now. Because um, because he needed a filter for it, the, um, he uh, he used a, a diode ladder because obviously uh, Moog at the time had the uh, the patent on the on the transistor ladder. So the uh, the diode ladder that uh, the Gene Sumcheck used was was a patent workaround. So it has a different characteristic to what we would normally expect. Very very different, obviously very different from the, the Moog transistor ladder because. Um, the main difference between a diode ladder and a transistor ladder is that in a diode ladder, the the, effect, the, the different filter stages aren't buffered, so that you get um, you get interaction between them. And um, the topology on this particular diode ladder filter is slightly different as well, in that the um, the CV uh, the CV control voltage is mixed with the audio and fed down through the two ladder stages. Okay, so what, what, kind of, what, can we, what, what can we hear from it? Is it a, it's a low pass, what, how many? How many right, pulls? well the original, the original Sonic 5 filter uh, was a four pole low pass filter. And uh, so in that we have uh, just our classic, our classic low pass. Kind of slightly creamy, but it's not yes. as quacky as the ladder, no. is it? No. So as we bring the. Is a is a diode filter what you got in the VS VCS3? Is that yes. It? Yes. And um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether the EMS filter predates this one or not. It would be interesting to. Uh, to do some, some some research into it and see who actually invented the diode ladder because um, um, I have tried to find out and uh, please anyone that knows do do share the information preferably online. So the, um, in terms of uh, controllability, you've got quite a lot going on there as well. Yeah, well, as well as the as well as the um, the the Sonic the Sonic Five filter, we've added um, originally it was a 24 dB four pole low pass filter only so we've added um, a 6 dB low pass stage to it and we've also added a band pass stage to it so when you say added does that mean you can get a five pole filter or is it no. just a six so no 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 that that just it's just a, it's a one pole or a four pole or a band pass 
um, all of them available simultaneously. The, the, other, the other two things that we've added, it, it actually has wave shaping on the input and it also has wave shaping on the resonance loop as well. So we have two completely independent wave shapers built into the filter. And um, I can show you um, I can show you those. So if we look at the we have we have input mix and resonance mix controls. So when the controls are fully counterclockwise, there's no wave shaping whatsoever going on in the module. Okay. Then as we as we feed in as we feed in the um, you can hear the wave shaping starting. And that starts to sound a bit more Steiner Parker then, doesn't it? Yes. It's got that yes. Yes. And you can hear the you can hear the wave shaping going on there. And we have there are various controls on that. And that wave shape shape obviously is dependent on the uh, on the signal that's going into it. Yeah, the drop on the Yes, and yeah, um, so it, it'll it'll behave differently with the triangle wave. The, uh, to a sort right. of. Uh, what, what is the. What, uh, uh, can we just hear the one pole? I'm just curious to hear yeah, what the 6 sure. dB sounds like. Yep, the 6 dB. That's with wave shaping, and that's without. Sort of natty, almost, isn't it? Yes, yes. Yeah. And then the, uh, the band pass. We'll just uh, have a listen to the band pass as well. A bit more fizzy. Yeah. And that, the the band pass responds really well to the uh, to the wave shaping as well. So that's the that's the wave shaping on the input, and then we also. We have wave shaping on the uh, on the resonance loop as well. Oh, that's more it. That's got a bit more of a high frequency ring body yes. kind of. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. So quite and a lot of tonal variation in that. And two shapes on that as well. Okay. So so we have a um, we have a square as well, which um, Which is probably um, it's going to I'd, I'd need to, to need get to a patch, patch up, that, yeah, yeah. that makes that makes more stuff. So that's our um, that's our Sonic XV filter, and then the the second module that we're launching is um, our Ring SM, um, which uh, sounds slightly uh, sounds slightly rude if you <laughs> if you if you, if you have oh, that in mind. Yes, um, but the. Um, with with this, it's a um, it's a 1960s design of ring modulator, which is built completely around discrete transistors, so that there's no ring modulator chip in there. For for most ring modulators, you use a balanced modulator, such as a, an MC1496 chip or two whatever. Two wires as well, which is interesting. Yes, it um, it has. So we used we use match transistor pairs um, so it's completely discrete circuitry and it's it's AC coupled um, which gives some um, well a little bit more character uh, to it the the module itself is actually three modules in one we have first of all a ring modulator we also have a sub base module uh, which is independent and that gives us a um, sign shaped sign sub at minus one octave and minus two octaves down. And the third element to the module is the, the mixer, so that we, we actually have the five channel um, discrete transistor mixer, which is based on the, the, the classic Moog CP3 design. So this is a DC coupled, um, a DC coupled uh, discrete transistor mixer. A DC coupled meaning you can use it to mix it control means, voltages as well, yes. right? Yeah. So one of the interesting things that you can do with the CP3 is um, it clips rather than uh, rather than soft distorts, and it dis it clips semi symmetrically. But what you can do is if you put a um, if you put a, a DC offset voltage in there, you can you can dial a positive or negative voltage so that you can actually um, create asymmetric clipping. So you can just clip the top of the waveform or just the bottom of the waveform. Okay, it's going to um, get different, different, different that, That's right, that's right. Can, can we hear this? Is it got, is it patched up? Um, 
not not easily on that one. I'd, um, I'd have to I'd have to repatch for that one. The um, I'll go through the the actual functions now. What we've done the with the mixer is that we've actually normalised the outputs or normalised the outputs from the uh, the ring modulator. So the ring modulator output um, goes to channel one of the mixer. Uh, obviously, if you plug a jack into uh, into input one, it'll bypass that, and uh, your external input uh, okay. will, will go through. Will go through the mixer, so you can use the mixer as normal. Um, but by default, with n with nothing plugged into the sockets, um, the ring module output, ring modulator output goes to uh, mixer channel one. The carrier, which is the X input, um, is can be passed through the mixer on channel two, uh, through input two, the Y input um, or the modulator is passed through on channel three. And then on channel four, we have sub bass minus one. And on channel five, we have sub bass minus two. All right, so you can use or not use each one and add your own signals Absolutely, to absolutely. So if we just um, get, a, get a patch going on this. First of all, we'll turn, we'll take everything off, and if we take out, if we take out the, the Y input, then we, with, with an X input and no Y input, then we get no sound out of the ring modulator, and that's, that's correct because it's doing its job. Um, we have a double switch here. And there we'll hear with the um, with the double we get um, we actually double the uh, the input the input frequency. So if we take the ring modulator we take the ring modulator output. So first of all with the with with the double with the double switch off we don't get any output. As soon as we switch the double switch on, all that that's doing is effectively connecting the X input to the Y input. So that's doing the classic ring modulator thing of, of frequency doubling. Right, okay. Because we have exactly the same frequency, and a ring modulator gives us the sum and the difference. Well, the sum of the frequency, because the frequency is the same, the sum in this case is double, which is double the frequency, and the difference is zero, so we don't hear the difference. So that's our frequency doubler, and if we feed in, if we feed in the X mix, you can hear the original sound coming through, being right. fed through, which is the um, the carrier. So we'll take that off for now, take the doubling off, and put an input into the Y, into the Y input, and then now, from that, we will get. Our class. Classic ring. Our classic ring modulator sound. Yes. And then the third option with that is to modulate the modulator so that we can feed in. With yes. right. So as we change the tune on the LF4, as we take the frequency down on the LF4, then obviously the the boing on the. Oh, interesting. The so we we have three inputs instead of two, and we can modulate the modulator. Now that's that that's our basic sound. So now we're feeding back. We can, we can mix back in. We're mixing back in the. Uh, the carrier and the modulator. Uh, it starts to get some comp more, much and, more complex. But then we can start and feed in the sub bases. Oh, so interesting. You can do some quite interesting drone stuff with it. Yes, it's 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 a um, it's a beautiful um, it's a beautiful module for drones. Right.
So it's because normally ring modulators don't normally excite me, but uh, with this one, I just thought, well, it's the combination of the of the sub bases, the ring modulator, and the, the third modulation source, and the CP3 mixer that I think uh, just make it quite a useful module. And is this in production or? Um, it's not far off. The, um, this, is, this is actually the first prototype we made, but it's very, very near to production ready. So we'd expect it to be available within a month or so. Available at all good modular dealers? Absolutely. Yes. Have you fixed a price yet, or are you still...? Um, we haven't fixed a price, but um, price-wise, it's probably going to be between the price of our, um, of our uh, mini-mod ladder filter and the mini-mod VCO. So um, the street price in pounds is probably going to be around the, uh, the £240 mark, but, uh, but don't hold us to that. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Have a great show.